Okay, how's it going guys? Uh, today's question is not too difficult. This question is about DFS, that's depth first search. And if you're very strong in depth first search, go ahead and sit through this video with me and we'll go over this question. But if you're not good at depth first search or you don't understand the concept as well, or you're a little worried, you're a little rusty because you know, it's been a while since you've actually looked at it. I would highly recommend that you go and watch this video that I'm going to link right here. Let's actually get on with this question. So the question says, given a 2D board and a word, find if the word exists in the grid. So the grid they're talking about is this one right here that I've highlighted. And they also say that they give a word. It's A, B, C, C, E, D. That's the word that they're going to give. Now, they're also saying that the word can be constructed from letters of sequential adjacent cell, where adjacent cells are those horizontally and vertically neighboring. So if you're at a particular cell A, the adjacent cells for cell A is the cells on top, on the bottom, on left, on right. Let's take the first example and see how we would do this with no coding or anything involved in it. So given the word A, B, C, C, E, D, we have to return true if this particular string can be reconstructed from this grid, right? What we're gonna do first is we're gonna find a way to scan the entire grid row by row and uh, column by column. So as you're scanning it in the grid, if you ever find the first letter of your word, which is A in this case, if you ever find it as you're scanning it, you have to stop. So let's actually go to a dry run. So as we start scanning, oh look, we already found the first letter to the word, which is A. So now we've already hit the first letter. We're going to start and try to look for the second letter in the word, which is in our case B. So what we're going to do is we're going to use DFS to dig deeper into the nodes around A. That's what DFS means, right? It means depth first search. So it locks onto a node and then it goes deeper around that note in particular until it locks onto another node and then it uses that note to go deeper into other nodes as well. So that's what depth first search means. So if it locked on to A, it'll look at A's left and it says, okay, A's left is invalid because there's nothing there. It'll look at the bottom of A and it'll say, oh, it has an S, so that's not B, which is what we're looking for. And then it looks to the right and it says, oh, we've found B. So now we've found the second letter of our word. Now we are to do the same thing and look for the third letter, which is C on the right adjacent value of B is C. So we've already found that as well. There is an other C right after that. So we can't use the same C twice because we're already told uh, from this statement right here, the same letter may not be used more than once. So this C can only be used one time, not no more. So now to find the next C, we are, to, we are to look at the adjacent cells of C again. If you look at the bottom, you see another C. So we've already found the next C. So now the new target becomes this C and we are to find out the next letter in the word, which is E. You will see that at the bottom of that cell is E. So we've also found E. And then if you look at the left adjacent cell of E, you'll find D as well. So we've actually already reconstructed our word A, B, C, C, E, D, and that returns true. At this point, I asked the interviewer about any edge cases that could arise. It also shows the interviewer that you understand the problem really well, and you were able to actually think about the edge cases uh, initially rather than face problems later. So one of the very common edge cases in this case, as I've told you in other questions as well, is in just an empty input. So in our case, we could get an empty board. With, so the grid is basically blank. Step number one, which was running through the grid. We had to find a way to actually run through the rows and columns of our grid. So how we're gonna do that is just by using a double for loop. The first for loop will run through the rows. And the second for loop is gonna run through each column in that row. As you're running through the rows, you have to make sure that if you ever hit the first letter of your word, you have to stop. After that, we are to in initiate our DFS process. So let's just do that. And the DFS should take in the row. It should take in the column. 
it also needs the board to actually reference their own column and then it needs the word and as we run through our dfs process we have to also loop through the letters in our word so that we, we make sure we're able to find and compare each of those letters to the letters in the grid so we need an index to actually um, follow our letters and that's what we're going to do now we're going to make an index as well we'll just call it index and let's just start that index at zero so now we don't have dfs function so let's go ahead and define our dfs function there you go so our dfs function is built and it takes in as its parameters the row column board word and the index itself so now in this dfs function we are to take care of our base cases the first base case that we will actually be looking at is our row and column values are invalid now why would they be invalid is because we can have a situation where our row value or column value can be so high or so low that we can actually be out of bounds of our grid so now we are to take account for the fact that as you're checking the adjacent cells of the current cell that you're at you might never find the letter that you're looking for I forgot one thing I you also have to account for the fact that if your index is the same length as your word that means that you've already iterated through every single uh, letter in your word which means that you've already found all the letters in your grid which is good now you actually make this function recursive this part that I'm gonna code you're gonna see me check the adjacent node so I'll check the top the bottom the left and the right uh, of that particular cell any of these DFS recursive calls return true, then what that means is we've actually found that one of the adjacent uh, cells that we're looking at has the letter that we're looking for, which is a good thing. So we're gonna say, we're gonna set the fact that we found the letter as true. And if we can't find it, we set the letter in board as false after this return our results which is a result is basically letter and board because that's the variable that holds the fact that we if we found the letter we've also forgotten to do one thing the same letter cell may not be used in this case let's just assume that it's okay to change the board itself so we'll make in place changes so when we do visit a particular cell will mark will mark it as visited by changing the value in that cell we might need the value in that particular position so now all we have to do is i forgot to put a return statement so you're basically sending your board and the word and it's an index and a row and a column to your dfs function and if your dfs function recursively finds out that every letter is sequentially adjacent and you can form the word from your grid itself and if it returns true that means that we have already found the word we have found the word in the grid that we're looking for but if it runs through both the for loops and it doesn't return true that means we should return false and that's it so let's run this and see if this works it worked